don't know. I don't know if you all noticed, but I, I like a good hoodie. As a consequence of me liking these hoodies so much, I have collected many, many hoodies over the years, many of which I do not wear anymore, either because I grew out of them or colors don't suit me or they're just not comfortable in the way that they are cut or styled. And because like a maniac, I have kept them all because I'm always like, oh, I'll wear this someday. Uh, and then I don't. I just have a huge pile of hoodies that I just don't wear anymore. And I would like to turn them into something that I do want to wear should probably take my fingers off but i didn't i couldn't i didn't you would you could you do i don't have a knife like prickly alpaca okay okay let me let me take my fingers off what i've got here is this dinosaur hoodie that i really like wearing it's from motokawa unfortunately it came in one size fits all and I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a small person, but I am also five feet tall. I, I don't think it's one size fits all, universally. But more or less, I do enjoy really wearing this. The only thing I would change about it is probably the length of the sleeves. And since it's color block and it has all these little details, that should be pretty easy to cut out of other sweaters. So what I'm going to try and do is take a whole bunch of the hoodies that I don't wear and try to undo all those hems and get enough pieces so that I can turn them into these things. Yeah, yeah, that's a good intro, that's fine. As you can see, I have a heckin' stack of both hoodies and sweatpants from my husband and I over the years that neither of us really care to wear anymore. So it was time to get to giving them some new life. So first thing first was getting to seam ripping, which in general, I hate seam ripping, but actually this whole process was pretty relaxing, despite me stabbing myself multiple times on accident, but it's fine, casualties of war. And by war, I mean being a high creativity and low dexterity person. On a previous day, I had gone through the entire stack and already sort of laid out what the best color combinations would be for the sweaters that I had in mind. And of course my cat promptly slept on all of the sweaters, so everything is covered in hair. But besides that, I had some of those sweatpants and sweatshirts sorted into what would be saved for a different project and also what would become the sleeves, body, spikes of various hoodies. So I got to seam ripping all the necessary pieces. My original plan for the hoodie that was to make up the sort of body section of the sweater was just to take off the sleeves and crop the hoodie a little shorter, leaving the hood attached so that I wouldn't have to re-sew that mess back on. But because of how the spine spikes attach to the hood and down the back and then also how the sleeves are much bigger than the original sleeve holes and because I'm saving the bigger scraps from the project for hopefully future projects to result in as little waste as possible, I just decided to take as much of each of the hoodies apart as possible and hope for the best when sewing it back together. Unfortunately, while I was actively destroying my fingers and no spoilers here, I was listening to Critical Role episode 33 and 34 of Campaign 3, in fact, which you can see clearly the number of emotions those episodes take me through. I know, I know, I'm very, very behind, but in my defense, life is busy, man. Don't come for me. I'm working on it. And at least I didn't have to wait for a whole week between episode 33 and 34. But maybe I should have because, oh boy, those episodes really took me out. So after hurting myself both physically and emotionally, it was time to start tracing the original Motokawa hoodie out and creating a pattern of sorts. I did modify the pattern a little bit, giving the arms much bigger sleeves and stretching out the body a little bit more for my own comfort and anyone who is more precise about making patterns than me which is pretty much everyone is probably having an aneurysm about the way i'm doing this but it's fine it turns out fine nothing goes wrong in this process at all actually the pattern i'm making for this hoodie is relatively forgiving since everything is going to be big and bulky there's not too much concern about oh this won't fit me when it's sewn if i make it a little bit small um you yeah you're pretty safe on the most part not too bad at all once i had all my pattern pieces made and marked and seam allowances added it was time to start cutting out the pieces from the chunks of fabric i managed to get through the biggest pieces of one hoodie but it was starting to get pretty late so i decided to call it and continue tomorrow Day two, I promptly got back to cutting the fabric up 
and decided to not start my morning by listening to more Critical Role. As good as it is, I just needed a brain break from that whole sequence of events. And instead, I decided to expose my need to listen to K-pop every once in a while and also how many times I actually dance to some of the K-pop songs in Just Dance 2020. Also, look at this beautiful POV. You watch me and five minutes later, I ask you why my back hurts. Also, I managed to injure myself again with the rotary cutter because I have the fine motor skills and dexterity of a two-year-old. So you see band-aids magically appear onto my fingers throughout the course of this project. Actually, cutting the pieces was a little bit nerve wracking because I knew I had limited amounts of fabric to work with and also fabric in limited size and shape. The front body pattern piece especially gave me a quite a bit of trouble. I found out that the pattern was just a tiny bit wider than the shoulder pieces on the original hoodie that I was cutting from and I couldn't adjust where that body pattern needed to go because I would cut into the little graphic that's on the front of the hoodie and since I wanted to keep that I instead decided to trim down the pattern a little bit and crossed my fingers that the extra sleeve space would make up for me shaving off that little bit. So I spent the whole morning cutting these fabric pieces and then arranging the sweater in preparation for the whole sewing process. As you can see, I have my two different sweaters all laid out and ready to be sewn. However, I ended up giving my serger a little bit more fabric than it could handle at some point, and some of the fabric got caught in the mechanism, so I need to go and unstick that all, but I didn't feel like I had enough time or energy to go and unstick that all and also go on to the second sweater, and I was not comfortable continuing the project on my sewing machine with a zigzag stitch instead, so this very brightly colored red green blue sweater does not make it for the video unfortunately and hopefully I get back to it in a timely manner instead of inevitably procrastinating on it. But on to sewing. <laughs> I started with the spikes because that would require much less of my serger and I was not quite ready to hand myself over to re-threading that beast immediately so I sewed the spikes on my sewing machine as best I could, right sides together, cut a bunch of little notches in the excess fabric and then turned it inside out and ironed it nice and flat and beautiful as Gunner would say. Honestly, I felt like I should have been more worried about the way that the spikes would turn out and worried about making all the spikes even, but honestly, on the original sweater, they weren't really even or well made, so I kind of was just happy with the idea of having spikes on my sweater, regardless of whether or not they were even at all. So I then went to sew the spikes onto the hood, which was a mistake in hindsight. I should have started with the sleeves instead of jumping straight into the hardest part of the hoodie right away, but you know what? I was I was feeling ambitious. I was feeling pumped after listening to so much K-pop and seeing the whole project laid out. But like I said, sewing the spikes onto the hood was kind of a huge mistake. What I should have done and hopefully will remember to do for the next hoodie is sew the hood body and all the little uh, stretchy stuff at the bottom of the hoodie on and leave the back open in one big straight line and sew the entire spine on at the same time. Unfortunately, my life is exclusively trial and error and mostly error, but you know, how else am I going to figure new things out? All that knowledge for the next round of dinosaur hoodie that I'm going to make. But regardless, I managed to make my way through getting the hood attached and I did find out that the neck hole was a little bit smaller than it should have been. But honestly, I'm not beat up about it because I like me a high collar. So, you know, you you win some, you lose some. Uh, but for the next sweater, I'll cut away a little bit more of the fabric to make the neck hole just a smidgen wider. After that, it was onto the sleeves, which is an extremely satisfying satisfying part to work on, uh, minus the part where I sewed one of the cuffs on backwards and had to resume the dreaded seam ripping, and not only just a regular seam ripping, it was seam ripping a doubled up zigzag stitch. But you know what, sewing the little spikes onto the sleeves was wonderfully satisfying. And then also, don't come for me for only using white thread in this project. I only had black and white thread for my serger, and then I didn't have a matching blue thread anyways, so... And besides, pretty much none of the seams would be visible anyways besides me re sewing the pocket onto the front of the hoodie. And with all the pieces assembled, I finally had another dinosaur hoodie, but specifically catered to how I like my hoodies.
and that's on having a dex of seven irl but if you can ignore this bruise that is forming on my forehead right now i would like to talk a little bit about the hoodie i am stoked about how this turned out and as soon as i get my serger fixed i am on the next one but you know i'm super happy instead of having a bunch of hoodies and sweatpants that i don't really well that i'm never going to wear i not only have this super comfortable i have a really freaking sick <laughs> super cool dinosaur hoodie that i'm absolutely going to be wearing all the time and also at no cost to me besides a little bit of time and blood from my fingers i have been sitting on this project for quite a while and only just now got around to it but i was really looking forward to it and i'm also really into just taking a bunch of my old clothes stuff that i don't wear and changing it into stuff that i can and do and will be comfortable wearing and also not having to go and buy an entirely new wardrobe every time my style changes and yeah I, i'm no rachel moxie as much as i would like to be just a regular average little guy making a regular average little dinosaur hoodie from clothing that i think a lot of people have in their closets to sort of inspire you that you can maybe do the same thing. Obviously, I'm not going to be sharing the pattern for this dinosaur hoodie anywhere because it's not my pattern, it's Monokawa's pattern. But you know, at least I can inspire you to go out and maybe cut up some of those clothings that you have been saving in a stash somewhere if you're like me, that you're like, oh, I'll definitely get to upcycling this and then, and then you don't. <laughs> But hopefully I can make this whole closet flip thing a series and I definitely have plans for a ton of future things. While I was filming in the other room, you would not believe the mess that I was trying to avoid filming on the floor. There were just tons of small piles of clothing that I was like, this is going to be one project, this is going to be another project. So I'm really looking forward to getting to that. But yeah, stick around because maybe eventually I'll get to put more of these videos amongst my many, many speed draws. And yeah, go put dinosaur spikes on your hoodies. It's super cool. No who cares i love it it's great um and <laughs> i'm going to go put ice on my forehead and nose and my ankle and both of my knees because and just hope and pray that i don't have a bruise because i have things to go to <laughs> um, and people to see so um I, I hope that a bruise doesn't form but who knows not me